so the past 48 hours have been a little bit crazy here and um we've done some major changes uh major change number one probably the most dramatic would be uh last night my cousin jason came down he finally had his coop ready and finished and he came and took all the chickens you know I probably would have been a lot more sad, a lot more upset if it hadn't have been for the fact of, you know, I know where they're going. I can visit them. Uh, they sent me a picture um, and everybody's doing really well. They've adjusted really quickly. And, you know, honestly, if, I'd have, if I would have had to sell them, I think it would have been harder because not everybody keeps their chickens in the same manner or level or standard that I keep mine. And so, um, knowing that he does keep them to that standard, if not higher, makes me, it, it's comforting to know. Um, you know, in past videos, I've talked about keeping Trinket in the house and that was the original plan. Um, and then my husband who is, um, extremely wise and he normally normally I'll get all these crazy harebrained ideas and you know like the pony in the back of the car type ideas and he he's always like logical where I can be more emotional obviously I'm female that's, that's kind of how it goes um, but he's always he's always very supportive of what I want to do but sometimes he will speak wisdom into whatever situation I'm in. And in this particular case, you know, Trinket, he told me, you know, I'm, I'm fine with you keeping her in the house. I'm fine with it. But um, you got to think about it from her standpoint. She was raised with other chickens. She's never had to be alone before. You don't have Flappy to take into the house with her. Um, she would be completely alone. And she's went from this large coop and all this space to a little tiny cage. And so he said, you know, is that fair? And he, you know, he's right. It, it's not fair. And I don't want to do her that way. Um, so in her best interest, you know, I mean, people will tell you, you know, chickens do well in confinement. And yes, there are people that have house chickens as pets. But these chickens were raised in the house. They don't know anything different. It's it's something totally different when you're taking them from outside, running free, running loose with a flock, to inside a cage completely alone. So, little different. Um, so, I did make the decision. The girl who um, let me borrow the incubator uh, in exchange for Trinket Chicks made me another deal. She has uh, the little Baney chickens, and so, um, and she's crazy about Trinket. And so, what she decided is me and her discussed it, and she has a breeding pair of button quail. So, we swapped out. She took Trinket, and tomorrow she will be bringing me the button quail. Um, I told you guys I was going to wait on quail, and I kind of was going to. I am, typically, most homesteads raise like Caternix quail because they're um, better as far as meat because they're much larger. Um, but button quail would be something that is tiny or <laughs> the normal quail. There's only two of them. And so, you know, I will be able to kind of test the water and see how I like doing those. Um, if that works out, I actually found somebody nearby, not near nearby, they're over an hour away, but, um, close enough. Uh, they will sell me 36 quail, hatching quail eggs for $9. So, um, that'd probably be the route we go and it is Caternix quail or the Japanese quail. Um, so that's, that's what we will do if that's, you know, something we're really into. Um, so, what well, baby. So, um, that's the other homestead news is that we are getting quail. Um, so I hope that works out. Third, uh, other big change is, um, winter. My dog, you guys have seen her before. Um, she came from a rescue out of Knoxville, Tennessee called Fighting for the Bullies. Um, and they have been posting off, um, friends with the, um, the owner, Carla, and, um, 
I follow the rescue, obviously, still. And so I've been seeing a lot of posts of her begging, please, guys, I need fosters. I need fosters. And um, we made the decision to foster a puppy. So <laughs> what? He doesn't like the fact that I'm talking to the camera and not him. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Pretty boy. <laughs> um, anyway, so, uh, we decided to foster a puppy and his name is Nero and he is available for adoption. He's really timid. So our job as foster mom and dad is to teach him to potty train and crate train and leash train and everything you would possibly need to know to be just the perfect dog for when he goes to his new home. Um, he got neutered today. He's a little sore, a little tired. So, but so far, honestly, guys, he's been like the best dog. He's just such a chill puppy. He's, he's fantastic. He's five months old and he weighed 44.2 pounds today. So he's a big boy. Um, so that's the other project. I'll actually link her rescue below. If you're anywhere near the Knoxville, Tennessee area and you guys are interested in fostering or adopting from her, you're always more than welcome to, um, if you can't, she always accepts donations because she has, I'd say well over 30 dogs in rescue. Not all are available for adoption right at the moment, but she's probably got more than 30 right now. So, um, medical bills get high, <laughs> uh, feed bills get high. So, um, you guys are more than welcome to donate to her. So that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you guys. We've had some uh, definite changes. Got a puppy. Um, chickens are gone. Trinket went to Ashley. And we now are getting quail in the morning. So you will no longer see our chicken videos. It'll be quail videos. <laughs> Um, no, we will see a little bit of chicken videos because I'm still going to, like I showed you guys, if uh, you watched, I candled the eggs uh, day 10 and I had 13 of the 20 were actually fertile, 7 were not. Um, and I had 6 more eggs, uh, 3 more olive eggers and 3 more trinket babies that I put in today. So they're going to be a little bit behind. I'm actually doing something that I had seen online and talked to um, Amy about, Amy from Fuels Homestead, um, uh, called uh, continuous hatching. It's where you put eggs in over so many day space of period every day. And so you continuously are hatching new chicks out. So we're going to see how that works out. Um, there would obviously be some size issues if, let's say, you have chicks that are two and a half weeks old and you're putting hours old chicks in with them. It's not going to work out as well, so I actually have multiple brooders, so we'll see how that works out. I just wanted to let you guys know what happened uh, in the last two days and why you've not really heard anything from me since we made biscuits. <laughs> I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. Um, make sure to like us on Facebook, Instagram, and always subscribe here so you never miss anything. Love you.